Hello guys, Marie here and I'm back with another sketchbox or two actually, February's and March and I've gotten a little behind on these ones so I thought I would just take these two and mash them together and make a drawing with the supplies from both boxes. I thought that would be a fun challenge and yeah, you also gotta love the placement of the shipping labels on this one, very clever. I mean, there isn't enough room on the back side of the box, so you just have to put it on top of the logo. So this is an art supply subscription box that you can get delivered home to you every month, and it's filled with delicious art supplies. And if you would like to try out one of these yourself, you can use the discount code CATVAL2017 to get 10% off on your first order. I will leave a link to their website down in the info box below so check that out also i am not sponsored by the way so yeah without further ado let's check out what's inside these boxes first we have february's box and this is all the delicious art supplies but first the featured artist that is Joan Barbie I think it's pronounced a really cool name and she made this awesome pastel owl that is so beautiful a list of all the art supplies and both these boxes are premium boxes but there is also basic ones that you can choose that is a little cheaper if you would prefer that. So the first supplies in February sketchbox is a set of pan pastels and I have tried this before in a previous sketchbox and I really really like them. They are dry pastels in pans and you can use tools like this one, the soft starter set with sponges and stuff to apply them like paint. And there is also some sponges coming with this set. This is apparently an exclusive collaboration set between sketchbox and pan pastels including including the colors pearlescent violet, pearlescent blue, pearlescent green, light gold and colorless blender which I haven't tried before so that will be interesting. And the pan pastels are erasable so we also got this fancy looking eraser in a paper box that is called Moo Professional Eraser. And the last supply in February's box is a Stabilo Sensor Fine Liner and this got a very special springy nib. I guess if you're using a harder pressure it won't break as easy, perhaps. So that was all for February's box, let's see what March has to offer. So yeah, as you can see the supplies are a bit different from the other ones, so this will really be a mixed media artwork. Let's take a look on the featured artist of March 1st. This beautiful artwork is made by Victoria Wilson. So the first supply in March's box is this Liquitex acrylic ink and it got a very very interesting and special muted pink color and this is a special release apparently. It's got a built-in pipette in the lid which is really handy if you want to move the ink from the bottle to a mixing palette or something. Then we have these Fabriano watercolor postcards and I really like this brand and the paper looks so nice and I will definitely use these at some point but for this video I will probably not use them I'm afraid since I will do a mixed media artwork. I will need a different and a bigger paper so I can really try the pan pastels. And next we have this Princeton Neptune dagger brush and it looks really really interesting. It got like a knife or dagger looking bristle that I haven't seen before so I'm really curious to try this. And the last supply in March's sketchbox is a Sakura Pen Touch White that is extra fine and with this one you can apparently add highlights and such. So yeah, that is all the supplies I've got to work with today and I'm really excited to try them. I'm gonna try to do my best to incorporate them all in one drawing besides the watercolor paper, so let's go! 
So I'm first trying out the supplies before making the artwork and I love the look of the shimmery pan pastels. It looks absolutely amazing. Not super saturated but still beautiful. I always want to try out the supplies first to see what I got to work with and how they look on the paper. The eraser was great I think but it smelled surprisingly bad like a really really strong rubbery smell that I didn't enjoy too much. And one thing I wish I've tried here is the ink on top of the fine liner. I totally forgot to try that and I will have to pay for that later. So I made a sketch of this free-eyed girl with hair buns and flowers in her hair and I struggled a lot with the flowers to be honest and I had one idea in my head but then it just turned into a mess and I tried my very best saving it but I've never been good at drawing flowers with this kind of intricate petal pattern so that is something I need to practice more on and I'm not trying to make them look realistic by the way they're meant to be a bit more cartoonish I used the Stabilo or Stabilo, I don't know how to pronounce that really, fine liner for the line work and I really enjoyed working with it. The paper is a bit more textured and I like working with fine liners on rougher surfaces. It was nice and easy to work with and it didn't fade too much after erasing on top of it to remove the sketch underneath. And I first thought that I would definitely use this again for future work but further into the drawing process I kind of changed my mind about that and you will see why but it was still a very nice pen to draw with and it was actually quite pigmented. Then I'm starting adding the pastels and I just love working with them. As I said they may not be super saturated but they still look pretty amazing. They are shiny and shimmery. I mostly worked with a tiny little eyeshadow applicator thingy that came with the set since I thought it was fairly easy to control compared to the other tools that I got and I think the sponges may be better for larger areas. The pastels are easy to blend and layer and I love to have even more colors to experiment with. I tried using the Colors Blender Pastel too, you know, the white one, but I'm not exactly sure on how to use it. I just think it made the colors look dull and less shiny. I wanted to use the Liquitex ink for the flowers and my idea was first to mix some of the ink with water and make like a lighter layer first and then go over it again and building up the layers and the contrast but as soon as I put the ink wash on the flower the line art immediately dissolved and mixed with the ink and made this grey uh, mess. Not what I was expecting and I know that some fine liners doesn't work with water but I was so sure that this one was like the other waterproof pens that I normally use but it doesn't say waterproof anywhere on the pen so my mistake. So what I did to try to save it all was to go over the line art with the eraser to get rid of any excess fine liner ink to minimize the bleeding and it worked okay but the fine liner still bled a little but I think it turned out pretty decent anyway even if I had to do it a little differently from what I first had in mind. Also not a big fan of the dagger brush I'm afraid. It looks really nice and all and I'm sure it is of good quality but the bristle hairs are much much longer than usual and super soft and floppy which makes it very hard to control. I think maybe for larger areas and larger paintings it would work great but not for smaller detailed work like this. I think I enjoy the supplies more from February's box than the ones from March and I'm happy I combined them because I'm not sure how fun March's supplies would have been on their own with the ink and brush and white pen only. And I like the pastels and I like the fine liner too even if it was a little messy with water. I will try to use the Fabriano watercolor postcards too and I might do that for a future Sunday doodling video so let me know if you have any suggestions what I should paint on the postcards.
I also used the ink for the background, which tied this whole drawing together, I think. And it is a really weird but still interesting color combination. I'm not sure if I'm loving it or not, but I think that the pink background makes the pan pastels pop even more. And speaking of the ink, the color tone is really quite special. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I didn't like it at all at first, but I think it's growing on me, actually. Then I used the white Sakura pen to add some highlights and details in the middle of the flowers and in the background. It looks great on top of the ink and it seemed quite covering and pigmented. So there you have it, it was a fun little challenge mixing all these art supplies together and overall it turned out pretty nice I think. The muted pink acrylic ink is really in contrast to the shimmery and pastel colors and I think it adds to a very interesting color scheme. Let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to try out the sketch box yourself check out the link in the info box below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like and a comment and all that fancy stuff. It is highly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. That will be another art supply box. I hope you don't mind too much. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!